Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Minnie and Mia. Yeah, yay. Episode 11. Episode 11. It's been three weeks. It has been three weeks since our last confession. I mean, upload. <laughs> Is, that, is this a confessional? <laughs> this is not a confessional. In fact, this is our podcast of crafting and gratitude. And I am Mia, Michelle, Mia, Forever Mia Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. And I share about my fiber crafting, knitting, crocheting, spinning, sometimes other things, hobbies. And? And I'm Mini, or Mini Lead, or Howard. Uh, I am Mini Lead, or Mini Lead's Miniature Worlds on Instagram. And I show off my crafting stuff and um, talk about gaming and other things that come to mind every once in a while. But I create uh, dungeon terrain, I create uh, tabletop gaming accessories and print and paint miniatures, and I also sell houses for a living. So I like to say that I create, or I sell houses both big and small. Yes, and one of the things that we love and appreciate about this podcast and why we're doing it is that I don't do gaming so much or play D&D. &D. And I don't do knitting so much, like at all. <laughs> But we like to support and encourage each other in each of our passions and pursuits um, because that's what it looks like to be in a supportive relationship and not an enabling relationship. I know that, I'm not. It's a fine line to dance. <laughs> I know I'm not wearing a nerdy t-shirt today, but it's a little chilly in our garage. So I am wearing a beautiful hand knit sweater made by the lovely Forever Me Knits. Oh, thank you. This is the, we're actually both wearing the same pattern. But yeah. yeah, so I'm also wearing a hand knit sweater. So this one is the flax pattern by Tin Can Knits, and mine is called the Flax Light. And it's just the difference of the weight of yarn. So mine is a thinner weight yarn, and his is a worsted weight yarn. No, it's the bested weight. It's the worsted weight. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's like yarn that you pour Worcestershire sauce on. Mm, no, it's a thickness of yarn. <laughs> Still don't know. I yeah. still don't know these terms. I know terminology. Terrible. We should do terminology next that time. That could be fun. And All right, I'll teach about... you dex and cha and stretch. And I'll teach you tog and tog and ssk. Ssk. <laughs> Super secret key. K two tog. What? <laughs> It's out like there. you're just making stuff up. <laughs> I know, but I'm not. And I think that's so funny. We're going to roll an insight check right now. Literally, we have zero idea, like, who's watching this and whether they're interested in my craft or Howard's craft or a totally different craft. Yeah. Or maybe you're just our friend and you just like watching us. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And the fact that, like, some of you will know my terminology and some of his, I think that'd be a really fun game. Anyways, I'm drinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm drinking out of this really special cup which my friend made. It says, you are so loved. And I won it at a, a white elephant party. And she's ago. drinking this. Black Coffee PDX. Our friend roasts coffee beans and he's awesome. And he's starting his own small side biz. This is single origin from Tanzania and it was roasted December 17th. And it's year. delicious. It smells really good. And the thing that I like about this is that you can put as much cream and sugar in it as you want and still be drinking black coffee. So it's still good for you. It's wonderful. It's a life hack. Life hack by Howard right there. <laughs> and I doubt he's going to be watching this, but if he was, he'd be like, oh, Howard, stop it already. Because Howard loves to send his friend pictures of his coffee and it's almost like beigey white. <laughs> It's the correct color. <laughs> so, good times. Good times. What are we talking about today? I don't have any new, like, crafting because I've been doing... Well, we usually we do, like, the itself. what's on the workbench. What's, or on, what's the work on the workbench? What's on the workbench, Howard? For me, the workbench has mostly what's been on my project? laptop. Talk I've been that. working with a program called Blender. Blender is a free 3D modeling tool. You can use sculpting tools and brushes, and I'm still learning all of it. Um, 
I have gone through a couple of tutorials. I'm going through my third tutorial right now, um, sculpting a dragon, and I have blocked out all of the basic shapes for it. And um, next I get to learn the actual sculpting tools and retopology and um, how to add texture brushes and Ooh. like start putting in details. So uh, that's what I'm excited about right now mm -hmm. because I, let me go grab one of these heads. Um, I've shown these before, but I've got a few that I just could show off real quick. Right, say that again, just in case the audio didn't pick you up. So I am doing these trophy heads. Um, here's a dragon head that I'm working on. And then here's like a giant head. Rawr. Um. <laughs> He's so scary. <laughs> there's this cool like war mammoth head. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I had created, I created um, these trophy mounts just with foam and then cast it in resin but I wanted to do more detail and better what and more uh, scalable as well. So that I could like print them at different sizes that easily. That makes so much sense. Right? Um, wow. So that I could fit them to the different creatures that you I- You even print it with the creature. Yeah. Yeah. You're so clever. I know. <laughs> So that's what I'm working on getting to. Also, I want to start creating my own dragons and my own creatures and um, start making my own 3D files to make available for myself to print and for others to print. And probably I'll start by offering some freebies uh, until I get good. You know, it's like those, the samples are free kids, but you got to pay for the good stuff. Um, wow, talking, that's really creepy. We're talking about STL files here. Oh, is that what the kids are calling it these days? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Be cool, stay in school. Um, sorry, I just, sorry to look at my phone. Friends don't let friends do STL files. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Anyways. Anything else you're working on? No, that's pretty much it right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm you, working, yeah. Over the last three weeks, you had some more, you know, work, job work. Yeah, job work stuff. Housework. Which is good. Up. I mean, it pays the bills. Yeah. So hopefully that continues to go well. Yeah, and my workload has been a little higher, so there's been more parenting dad work as well. Yeah. Which, you know, cuts into crafting time sometimes. It's ter It's the worst. <laughs> Don't have kids if you love crafting. <laughs> That's a horrible just... thing to say. <laughs> One of the things we'll be talking about today is family culture. <laughs> <laughs> no, we talked about that a couple episodes ago. Oh, that's right. We're talking about what? Intentionality. Intentionality. Mm. The word of the day is intentionality, but we'll talk about that more later. Fine. You're supposed to ask Spoilers. me a question if you're done. So, I'm done. What's on your, what's on the needles? There you go. What's on the needles? Woohoo! Careful. What's off of the needles? Everything's fine. <laughs> All right, so. I don't know if I showed these. But I'm working on these oh, so cute. really happy socks. I mean, you showed some stripy socks last time, but I don't know if it was these ones. I don't know if it was these ones. So this is Knit Picks, is the brand of yarn. That's cute. It was like gumball machine Super or something like that. Colorful. Very happy and colorful. Um, for our youngest, I had made a pair of socks using the same yarn that I gifted to a friend. And when she saw it and that there was not enough left for socks for her, she was very sad because she likes all the happy colors. And so I got some more of it so I can make her socks at some point. So those are slow going. And then the other thing in this bag is way down at the bottom here. And I hope I won't pull it off of the needles. Da 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 da! -da. Look at that. Uh, this is. Is this another sweater? A sweater pattern with color work, which will eventually be, this is the leaves for roses. And the pattern, let's be careful what I show, because you know. It's called oh, the yeah. Once in Floral sweater. 
the once and floral. Once and floral. Once. Floral. Like once and for all. Yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. Once and floral. So let me see if I have the front page of it. Sometimes I'm really just picky about what pages I print because you don't color, need all color of them. ink. So I don't know if that will show up. So that's what the sweater looks like. So Max, the knitter, is the one who created this pattern. It is gender neutral, but yeah, it makes these really awesome roses. So I was looking through my yarns and found the colors that I really liked. And one of the things that I did, which I don't know if you can do this. I mean, obviously you can do this in the painting miniatures world as well, but doing a, a photo and then making it grayscale so that you can make sure that the tones of your colors work well together. Oh, sure. So that's something that gets done a lot in the knitting world when you're doing color work, especially so that you make sure, I mean, obviously we see the color spectrum spectrum range, but just make sure if I'm putting all this work into this sweater, that's going to have all this detail that, the detail that it's going to show up, that it's not going to wash out or that the colors aren't going to just yeah disappear on you. So nice. that's a slow going because I'm not sure how I'm feeling about whether my color work is too tight or if I need to do any changes. Okay. And then I've been working a lot on this cardigan. So again, I'll try and find a picture of it. So this is what I've been working on the most. This vest? This cardigan. So it but goes. it doesn't have sleeves. So it's a bottom up pattern, which I don't normally do because I'm always nervous that I'm going to run out of yarn. <laughs> like I'm going to start at the bottom and get up to the top and then like have to make really dinky sleeves because I have no <laughs> yarn left. Um, which is why they always say buy more yarn than you think you're going to need. Also, like who has money to just buy extra skeins of yarn? Oh, I've seen just some in collections. Case. Yeah, but who I has minis to buy, or who has money to buy extra minis, just in case you run out of minis to paint? Here, can you hold that up for a second? Sure. So it has this lace work that goes all around the bottom, and it's going to go all up and down the fronts of both sides. And it's called the Stepping Stones Cardi by Rebecca McKenzie. And now, when she here finished she the first is. One. She's beautiful, modeling. This beautiful card again so i'm really excited this was yarn that was um it was like a gift card gifted to me from my co-workers a couple years ago and i bought this yarn and it's broco vintage dk in the what do you say the chana or chana masala oh, yeah. like a curry basically color which i really really like it's very soft very cozy and my hope i'm at the point where i have to decide like if I stop or if I add more length to it, like, do I want it to go down lower? Okay. Now, does that Cardi pie, uh, have, like, an A side and a B side? Is there, like, a Cardi B for it, or is it... Womp, womp, womp. That's hilarious. Cardi B. Thanks. Now, that would be my blue one. Yeah, weak. My blue cardigan is my Cardi B. I get Cardi it. blue. I get it. That's funny. So, I am typically... We differ this way. I'm typically a monogamous project person. <laughs> like I tend to enjoy just working on one thing at a time. Um, so when I realized like I had started socks and I already had several long-term projects and then I was really excited and I started two sweaters, I was quickly adding up going, oh my gosh, I'm feeling very overwhelmed. So then I just... You're like, I'm turning into Howard. I was like... All right, I need to put these in bags and put them to the side because I'm just going to focus on this one. And then it's when it's done, I'll pick up the other one again. Um, so because you don't have any finished projects to show? No, I don't think I have anything finished right now to show because everything is in progress. Because that's the thing that frustrates me about having a lot of projects. All of them, like the actual visual progress that you see is so in, like small for oh, each sure. one. Whereas I like to see like a lot of progress happening on one thing. It feels that. more satisfying to me. How do you feel about that? About um, many things versus one thing. I like seeing projects coming further along. Sometimes I just have a hard time making that happen. <laughs> yeah. So, 
I always have ideas for new things. Mm -hmm. You are an idea generator. You and our youngest child. Yeah. Very. I cannot high wait for her to open Unicorn Land. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's got. She has so many ideas all the time. A lot of them right now involve cardboard. Um, and Howard is good at making the cardboard dreams come true. I say? There you go. Crafty. No, so I don't think either of us have any, like, what have you done today to feel proud project-wise. Oh, but I feel proud that, like, um, I swam 100 laps on my birthday. Nice. That felt awesome. I feel proud that I only have one more workout left of my six-week challenge, and my yeah. final weigh-in is on Monday. Yeah, exactly. So, like, so there's good. other areas of our life where we're feeling some awesome awesomeness. Yeah. Also, last week was Valentine's Day, which is also your birthday. Yeah, that was just on Tuesday. It's Friday. Oh, that's right. It was this week. <laughs> it's still your birthday week, Michelle. It's still my birthday week. I know. I'm feeling it because I still have chocolates left over. Excellent. Today is the 17th, Friday the 17th, 2023. Yep, my birthday is Valentine's Day, so that was a very special day in our it's house. It's a big holiday in our home. <laughs> Double celebration. So that was very fun. Yeah. yeah. So the word of the day that we were talking about is intentionality. Intentionality. And so that ties in a little bit into like both of our crafting habits of, you know, monogamous versus like many, many projects at once. But I feel like it all kind of falls under the umbrella of purposeful living and just how easy it is to move forward without really stopping to look up and going and reassessing like is my life moving towards the goals that I hope it's moving towards like is my marriage growing the way that I hope and want it to grow um is my parenting going the way I want it to go is my job going the way I want it to go and there's lots of things out of our control um but there are things like within our control so just we were talking and thinking through like how do we intentionally incorporate crafting into our life how do we intentionally parent etc etc how do we intentionally build community build community and um, maintain it develop healthy relationships like yeah maintain healthy relationships with friends and family or even just our healthy healthy habits yeah of self like taking care of ourselves self-care mentally physically emotionally ecumenically <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even, what does it mean? Is that something about the church, right? I don't remember. Jack Sparrow says it, so I, I had to throw it out there. Um, I don't know. It's something that Howard and I have, uh, for lack of better words, um, always tried to be intentional about <laughs> in Jeez. our relationship. You can't use the word you're describing to describe the word, Michelle. I know, it's horrible. <laughs> so... Some of it just feels so natural to us, like we have developed the practice of like taking our daughters out for quality one-on-one -on -one time. So for Valentine's Day this year, Howard wrote each of them a card and next week he's taking each of them out for their own one-on-one -on -one special lunch date. Um, and I've noticed like that our days have gotten a little bit of a blur and so I've started the rhythm of doing intentional one-on-one -on -one reading time with the girls that I was doing a while ago and it went in a big lull and the girls were like are we ever gonna finish the book that you were reading to me and I'm like oh yeah okay <laughs> so they're always good at reminding us but also it's something that I want to do and so picking that back up again reading one-on-one -on -one time with my girls they're each in their own books so my brain is I'm reading three books <laughs> But they're each getting quality time in that way and that's just because we want our you know we want our daughters to have a long-term relationship with us and we want them to see and feel that we are making them a priority in our lives yeah. not the number one priority because you know i mean as believers that should be our relationship with christ but right. um we also believe that these are among the greatest gifts we will ever get in our lives. Yeah. So and that our time that. in this capacity of them being in our home is, is so much shorter than we 
think about when it's the day-to-day -day grind. And so being really intentional about that precious time that we have with them while they are young and living in our home and under our care is really, really, really mindful about that. Yeah. Um, then how do you, how do you intentionally carve out crafting time? Well, right now I have just been, um, I've been going to the gym in the mornings and then I come home and I check my messages for work and then I take a shower and then I spend some time in the office going through tutorials, usually until it's time to pick up the girls mm -hmm. or do lunch. And then, um, depending on the day, I'm not always as intentional as I could be about mm -hmm. how my afternoons are, yeah. are running. So that's a good, good question for somebody who doesn't plan well. Not a, not a great question. No, Cause no, I, no. I feel like, I feel like I have more time available to me than I am using well. Um, sure. I'm actually doing a Zoom class next Wednesday that I'm hoping uh, will help me build better uh, boundaries around my time. Sure. But I think what I what I hear you saying too is that you check in with your work job first because mm -hmm. your job is very fluid yeah. and different day to day. So you have to maintain a sense of flexibility. Right. And if that is like under control for the day, then I have you a lot have of time for the crafting or... bandwidth for doing the crafting and hobbying and taking on commissions, etc. Yeah. Um How about you? Well I mean... one thing I was gonna say too oh. is recently Howard and I were talking about just how we spend our evening time and like it was getting to the point where it's like we get up pretty early to get the girls ready for school and get the day going and I like to get up even earlier than them just so mm -hmm. I can mentally wake up um and spend time reading, reading or my reading or studying something and then our evenings like if we let our evenings go too long then we're just exhausted over and over just how important sleep is and yeah. getting a good chunk of sleep and so saying to ourselves like hey we actually have this goal that we both want to be reading more what if we carved our evening time and cut down our viewing content yeah. like we could watch <laughs> many episodes of a sitcom right we could easily <laughs> like it's just so easy to do I'll that just watch one more yeah uh, just one more just one more and then all of a sudden it's 11 o'clock and i'm getting up 5 30 and i'm like no this is not sustainable so what if we cut that down to one episode because yeah. we can exercise our self-control yeah and then spend time reading right before bed and since we made that change which in and of itself like if you are in a relationship like that's a mutual decision because right. we want to intentionally spend our evenings together mm -hmm. So we both have to be on board with this game plan for it to work well. Um, so thankfully it has. And then to say, I've since read two and a half you've books. read two and a half books and I'm like getting through a big book too. So um, it's been really good. I'm actually reading all of the Harry Potter books, which I had only ever read two of them, the, the last two. Because mm -hmm. I never wanted to spoil the movies by reading the books. <laughs> Because so I really liked the movies when I, when, you know, when they were coming out, I was like, these are so cool. And people are like, the books are better. And I'm like, so why read the books then? I would ruin the movies. Um, <laughs> and that kind of happened for me because like, I loved the sixth movie. And then I read the sixth book before the seventh movie came out. And I was like, this oh. is, this is awful. The why book is so much better. Why have they done these terrible things Editions. in the movies? But, um, yeah, that also leads into what I've been playing more than crafting them. It's true. Lately. <laughs> yeah. There's been a little detour of your, uh, like afternoon crafting time because Hogwarts Legacy came out. Yeah. And, and I love it. As someone <laughs> who I'm not like into video, games. into video games or like up on all the video games. So, I mean, I, every once in a while, I obviously am mindful about what my kids are consuming but they don't play grand theft auto and neither do i no <laughs> exactly yeah we're mindful about what video games we play in our house but also to just say uh visually it's incredible <laughs> like i would just want to play like just walking around and looking at everything because the visuals of hogwarts legacy are phenomenal they're so stunning. It's, it's so literally fun. like you're playing 
in a movie. Like it just feels so realistic. It blows my mind what these artists uh, have created. Yeah. yeah. For gameplay, it's. And it just furthers my resolve to eventually make a 28 millimeter scale Hogwarts on Hogs Baby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> for your grandchildren. Maybe. <laughs> future, future. <laughs> or, or if there's a really, really wealthy individual out there who wants that made for them. Huh? Eh? Hey, huh? Commission job? Eh? Hey, cool. <laughs> Good times. Um, yeah. So that's been really fun. Um, which, like, also goes with the intentionality of being mindful about, like, the time that we spend on that. Like, yeah. our kids have pretty firm rules around how much screen time they have every day because we want them to develop that practice of self-control um and at at the moment they have none so we have to impose it upon them yeah <laughs> and that's not abuse folks that's no, parenting, it's parenting. <laughs> so they get home they do lunch they do their schoolwork they do um, their yeah, piano practice. practice, they do whatever chores they're a supposed chore to they do. need to do, and then they get half an hour screen time. And that's it. And that's it. Um, and then they usually have, you know, a good chunk of time to read or play or do whatever else they want before Complain dinner. about not getting more screen time. Yeah, that happens for sure. <laughs> but that's okay. That's the way it goes. Yep. Um, I don't know. Anything else? I don't, know. I don't think so. I think we were maybe going to talk just about that fostering relationships and making time in our week to connect with people mm -hmm. uh, as part of that intentional or purposeful living. Mm -hmm. um, one of the rhythms that we have found to be really beneficial for us and for the relationships with people that we care about and want to see is literally just taking one night a week to have uh, free in our schedule to invite people over to share a meal and play some games with. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing that um, pretty consistently. Yeah. And it means that we have an open space at our table for people that we might not get around to seeing otherwise. Right. People who aren't in our regular, like, day-to-day -day 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 rhythm lives. and life. Yeah. So I'm really excited. We've got, you know, a friend who we haven't seen his whole family for years, even though I mm -hmm. game with him online pretty much every week. Right. So we get to hang out with them in a couple weeks. We get to hang out with um, somebody from your work mm -hmm. um, next, week. next week. And it's just a really good rhythm. And it's, again, that, um, that effort to create space to let other people know that, hey, we want to spend time with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really rewarding. We really, really enjoy being able to host people. And we don't do anything super fancy, you know, we no. just <laughs> make a little bit more of the, the food that we would be eating ourselves. Yeah. And then uh, play board games or Jackbox games or um, yeah. just hang out. Yeah. Telephone Pictionary. Friday is the day that we kind of do our big tidy of the house anyway, so the timing works well. <laughs> and then enjoy what we're already eating together, play games together. It's Friday, so the girls can stay up late because we don't plan things for Saturday morning as, as often as we can avoid it. Um, so they can sleep in and just watch cartoons in the morning. Yeah. So for some people probably hearing that being like, oh my gosh, once a week you like host people over and that could feel super overwhelming. <laughs> we're not saying any of these things that we're talking about are how you should do um, life or parenting or family or kids or even just being single. Like, It's just the right way to do it, folks. <laughs> we're not saying that you should do it. We're just saying it's the best thing that you could do. I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> that it's a continual conversation that you should have with yourself, with your partner, about um, What's important? how are we moving through life? Like, are we just wandering aimlessly? Um, I think it's one of the biggest gifts that we can try to receive from the pandemic and lockdown when everything shut down and we just had this moment of freeze in our lives. For me personally, at that time, Howard blamed me because I was so overwhelmed and our family was so overbooked with extras and activities and volunteering and working that we were just, I was burning out every day. Um, and I was like, I need a break. I was just looking forward to the next break. Yeah. 
and we weren't Sabbathing and resting well and didn't have these rhythms in our life. And so from that, it's like, what can I then learn from that complete shutdown? And what am I, what are we as a family building up now? And how are we being intentional with how we spend our time? Because time is the commodity that we can control. Mm -hmm. We can choose how long to sleep. We can choose how to fill our day. Um, so are we doing that? well and what are we choosing to spend our time and there are lots on. of good things that we might want to do yeah that we just choose not to do right now right yeah because it's it's not the most important thing for us to do right now right yeah. and i think that's just a balance that you'll have to figure out um yeah so. i think we all just have to navigate that otherwise we are just wandering through life and letting our prior, like letting our obligations control our schedules instead of letting our schedules control our obligations. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. And there's going to be different seasons where we have to buckle down harder on work or mm -hmm. things that would not be our priority or what we want to do. Right. Um, but as much as we can be intentional about how we are spending our time and how we are caring, especially for those in our most inner circle, um, is really really powerful yeah it's really really good to be intentional about how you are living and loving well hmm. i think that might be pretty much yeah, it I for think... this episode yeah what are you thankful for i am thankful that i get to eat carbs next week <laughs> You have been doing such a good job on your health challenge. Oh I'm gosh. so proud of you. Thank you. I'm not going to go off the rails or anything. It's hard. It is. We all know. So nuts. We all know it's so hard. It's so hard to have self-control around food when we, we really live in, a, in an abundance. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> I want to... Kudos to you. I want to buy french fries and cook them into a waffle maker and then... Make you a quite see waffle that? maker, French fry, cheeseburger. Oh my gosh, it sounds so crazy. I know. Oh. I was literally the. <laughs> They're gluten free. <laughs> it's like one of the first things that starts to happen for you because, like, this is not our first rodeo of hell challenges. It's, it's like it's, <laughs> it's it's we're all over the place. We're just always trying to do better. Yeah. But one of the first things you start doing <laughs> is finding like. All the food reels. And I don't know how. They found them me on I'm Instagram. Like, what this? And you're like, oh, this as looks soon as so I said, good. I'm, I'm like, not going to eat that, does, that doesn't look good. <laughs> it does too. Nobody wants to eat that. Everybody wants to eat that. <laughs> Stop sending me food videos. I don't want to see them. <laughs> it's so funny. What are you thankful for, Michelle? Oh my gosh. I'm thankful for laughter. <laughs> I'm thankful the way you make me laugh. Okay. Um, I'm really thankful that when I have these ideas of like, hey, we should read more at night, you get on board with it. Because um, sometimes I can just be like a hard conversation to even broach with somebody if it if it has felt like your ideas have been rejected over and over, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I appreciate, I appreciate you and oh. I'm also super thankful our kids' school did their music exhibition this morning so all the different so grades sang songs and oh my goodness it was lovely like, such a delight it just my heart I could feel my heart swelling it was so beautiful and so sweet and so good <laughs> and I'm also thankful on my birthday I really wanted to watch the animation mm. of the boy the mole the fox and the horse which if you haven't heard of it Check it out, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse by Charles Maxey. Maxey, probably said that name wrong, but he is wonderful. He is lovely. He has an Instagram page. The book itself is wonderful, but the animated feature just brings it to life. Yeah. I cried. I laughed. It was, I only cried twice. It's Maybe like, if you just like want to have a moment of feeling like there is hope for the world, <laughs> Like, it's not all just gone down the crapper and that there is something good and true and beautiful and it's to be created and worth fighting for. Watch this film. Like, it is so rich, so beautiful, so true, so good. 
Um, it's my new favorite thing. <laughs> it's awesome. my new favorite video ever. Best short film ever. I really hope it wins the Oscar. Um, yeah. And as always, our encouragement to you, our gratitude to you. Thank you for being here and uh, letting us share a little snippet of what we do. Um, we just encourage you to go out there, find somebody else who is making something that you like, let them know that you like it, say encouraging things to them, be kind to each other, mm -hmm. and just, yeah, be yeah. a positive presence in the community that you're a part of. Yes. And that's it. That's it. Minnie and Mia, out. Out. out.